Well, thank you, Peter, <laughs> for that fantastic elevator music while we're just getting everybody in here. Welcome, everybody. It's great to see so many of your faces today. Um, my name, if you don't know who I am yet, my name is Kim Dennis. I'm from the, I'm the Managing Director for the Alberta Band Association. And tonight we have a number of our board members that are going to lead a roundtable discussion about um, music education during the time of COVID and things that we can start to think about, ideas that we can reflect on. Um, nothing that we're going to share tonight is anything that's definitive and because none of us have enough information to make it, but we're all just kind of brainstorming possible solutions to things that we might encounter down the road so that we can we can approach our administrators once we kind of know what's happening come August 1st and pending the results of that University of Colorado study um, so that we can be armed with the information that we need. So welcome. It's great to see you here. Um, our panel people today are Jolene Wong and Sarah Drew and Peter Sakat. Also special thanks to Chi Meng Lo and the University of Lethbridge Zoom account for uh, <laughs> hosting this many people in a big old Zoom meeting. It's great um, to have you and have all of your contributions today. So without further ado, um, you can feel free. We'll just talk through what's going to happen a little bit tonight. I invite everyone to make sure that your, your microphones are, are muted and uh, so that we don't get too much background noise as, the, as we all work through the evening. Um, if at some point you have a question, go ahead and write it in the chat. I will be monitoring the chat and pulling up the questions so that um, when we get to the point in the discussion where our panelists can take some questions, um, we have a running list and it's easy to find. Um, and uh, if there are a few things, if you haven't used Zoom yet, that you might want to um, just hunt around for. Um, the chat function is usually, if you're on a computer, it's at the bottom of your screen. There's a little speech bubble that says chat, and that'll open up a window that you can type in. Uh, as well, there's a raise your hand function under the participant section if we get to the point where there are questions and uh, an open question forum in the course of the evening, uh, you can raise your hand without waving at me in the screen because I might not see you because there are so many of you. So there's a raise your hand function under the participant uh, where you can raise your hand and it'll raise your hand on the side next to your name. So without further ado, let's turn things over to Jolene. Hi, welcome everyone. Um, so this is like the largest Zoom presentation I have done all year. So a little nerve-wracking but I'm so happy to see so many of you join us this evening. Um, as uh, Kim had mentioned I'm joined by Sarah and Peter tonight so we're really excited to share a little bit of what we've been working on um, and I'd also like to acknowledge that right now I'm, I'm in Edmonton we're on Treaty 6 it's kind of cloudy out but I do want to acknowledge that we are on the traditional home of Métis Inuit and uh, Indigenous people so welcome. So I think the big elephant in the room right now is um, HS and their guidelines. I think that's why most of you are here right now. And, um, and the truth is, we don't know anything that you probably um, know. So um, right now, at, at this point, HS has said that their guidance for live music um, is that they're um, encouraging us to not do wind uh, instruments, not do any playing, definitely no singing um, and that they're going to update their guidance as needed. So we are aware that there are a lot of studies that are happening right now, predominantly the one in Ch uh, not Chicago, in uh, Colorado, um, and we are following them very closely and we want to assure you that um, we do have the ABA um, is in contact with people from AHS. We are in dialogue uh, we are we are in dialogue with HS and with Coral Alberta, and we are we are working towards finding um, hopefully a solution to this. Um, HS is aware of all the studies that are being conducted right now, so um, that's what we have on that end. Um, I know that Alberta students are planning on going to back to classes in September, and what that might look like for each of us is. A little bit different um, but that is okay we're all we're all together in this um, maybe in separate boats but we are all weathering the same storm um, at this point I would just like to um, 
open the question box for any questions about AHS guidelines. Ultimately, whatever AHS dictates is what school boards will be going with. So there isn't a whole lot we can do there on that end right now. Okay. Um, and so with that said, I think advocacy is a really big piece that we want to we wanna bring to everyone's attention right now. Um, we are all very passionate about what we do. Um, we are music educators. We, um, we go above and beyond for a lot of our kids. And, and I can go on about how important music education is, but it's literally preaching to the choir. You guys all know that. That's why you're here on your evening off to, to be a part of conversations. Um, but I think it's important at this point that we reach out and we start talking to our MLAs, our premier, our education minister, and we need to start really speaking up and getting our parents to speak up because if we don't advocate, nobody else will advocate for us. Um, the Women Band Directors International has put together a really awesome uh, letter that is um, pre-drafted um, and I'd like to share that with you guys in the chat. Um, uh, hopefully, Sarah or Peter, can you guys drop that into the chat? Um, as well as NAFME has re released a unified art statement, which is really quite powerful. And you can also attach that with any lettering that you're doing to your administrators. It's so important right now that we're sitting down and having those conversations with our admin because they don't know any better unless we tell them. So it's sometimes it's a hard conversation because right now there's a lot of unknowns. We don't know what's gonna happen. We don't, they don't know what's going to happen, but you wanna try to be a part of the solution. You wanna sit there and say, I wanna help you make this work right music moving forwards might be a little bit different we don't know if we're playing in september we don't know if we're in small groups we don't know if we're going to be back as a large ensemble um, so it's important to have those conversations with our administrators now more than ever we don't want to wait till they make decisions before we bring it up to them So there was a question on whether uh, we could get the Alberta government to change the should not for banned. And what we have to ultimately remember is that we have to think of the safety of our students and the staff, right? So if it is not safe to do so, then it isn't safe to do so. We, we can't play, right? Um, but I strongly would encourage letter writing and explaining and you know sending the research along to people up there in the powers that be um, that they can have, make an informed decision on what, what is happening. So everyone is dealing with three school re-entry scenarios at this point. The first one is fully virtual. So we're not going back. COVID is still running rampant. We hit a second wave. Um, and we're able to teach music online. Um, we have a lot of projects that we would recommend doing. Um, I'm going to actually turn it over to Peter right now and show you a little bit of what he's been doing with his class. Sorry, there we go, unmuted. Um, one of the things that I try to do to kind of get engagement up with my students be because in Edmonton Public, we basically were, you know, students were told that options were, very, were completely optional, they weren't required to take part. So that definitely took a lot of steam out of our, our programs, even though individual principals allowed us to continue. Um, you know, kids were feeling overwhelmed with core and things like that. So I kind of went with um, a, a more fun approach and just tried to put activities out there that they could participate in, nothing that was too complex, just to get them doing things. And so we did a little bit of a competition um, and I, I took this as an opportunity to kind of update my music website. And I just use this doing Google Sites. It's really fairly straightforward to use. If you don't feel like you're a techie person, it's it's not crazy hard to, to get into. I'll just share my screen real quick and uh, show you. So here's our, our DSM music website and we created this band in the warrior challenge and 
was just meant to be a silly fun thing that we could do. My daughter and I put together a little promo video to, to kind of launch the uh, launch the activities, and then I created a little site uh, part of my website where they could actually do some of these. So things that I would have done in class anyways, working on long tone, working on um, rhythm dictation and things like that. So they would just earn points for participating and I had grade seven, eight, nine levels. Um, <clears throat> we had a virtual band recording that we're working on. Still still putting that together. I will caution people that it's a, it's a huge technical challenge to put together those kinds of um, activities. So if you're thinking about that in the fall, know that there's a lot that goes into creating those virtual band or virtual choir things that are behind the scenes tech. Um, one of, I think, our most successful ones was just a listening project. And this is something that you could do um, over, if we're not able to type things, I wanted to get the kids listening to more music. So we did a, like a March Madness NCAA music tournament, essentially, with film composers. So using a really simple um, online bracket maker, I picked different composers and we matched them off over the last few weeks. Sorry, it's taking a little minute to load here. So it's really easy to embed other sites and YouTube videos into and Google Forms into a Google site. It's, it's literally click and cut and paste. So it didn't take a lot of skill to create this. You can drag things around. So we had every stage, I would post the YouTube videos of the winners or of the particular um, contestants. And then I just had an embedded Google form for them to listen to it and vote. And you know, each round we would move on. As part of it, I really like to shout out to Flipgrid. It's an amazing, website if you haven't uh, used it. I know a lot of elementary teachers use Flipgrid, but this is a really great site for getting feedback from students. They can respond to the challenge. Uh, they can automatically sign in. You can set the domains where they can sign in, so you can limit it to just your students, and you create these, you can do responses, and you can choose whether or not they can see the other students' responses, or if just you can. So in this case, I left them out and I said, you have to leave me a little 45 second review of one of your pieces, why you liked it. And uh, lots of students participated, even some of our teachers participated and had lots of fun and listening to each other's reviews. So this is one way that you might go about doing some things that, you know, even if we can't play, we can, um, we can get away with doing good musical activities. and uh, give them some stuff to work on. So that's just one thing we wanted to share. Yeah, so there are t there's tons of stuff out there right now. Um, I love Flipgrid. There's also uh, pre-made lessons on Flipgrid as well. If you look under the Disco Library, you can actually search what other music educators have, have created, and that's a great tool. Um, I've used it for my high school students, and, um, and it, it's worked very well. Um, other things with fully virtual instruction, um, I would, like with this digital age of Zoom, um, I'm sure a lot of you have been in um, a lot of Zoom meetings lately, and some of them are probably not based here. So I know um, Dr. Ambrose has been doing a lot with the Digital Band Directors Lounge where he had yesterday night was Eric Whitaker. And, um, uh, and so there's just tons of PD opportunity available. Um, so I would recommend getting in touch with a composer, perhaps a local composer, perhaps somebody a little further away, and bring them into your classroom because we're able to do that now. Um, I've done that with my high school class. We brought in uh, Peter Meachin and it was an incredible experience where Peter talked with my students for an hour. Um, other software, smart music has been really, really popular this uh, during the last few months. Um, my choral coach, if you're doing choir. Um, I also created um, a little document for um, my teachers in Emerson Catholic, which has a lot of pre-made um, lessons on there or projects that you can use. I tried to follow the Alberta curriculum when making it, so I plotted um, projects into curricular with curricular ties. 
Um, yeah, Smart Music is ending on June 30th, but uh, it might be worth looking into maybe a district license if they are able to do that. Um, in terms of classroom, you want to make sure you set, um, you want to have as much engagement with your students as possible. So try to do, encourage them to use video, having them do maybe daily questions, little things to check in with them, because this digital interface is really difficult even for adults to, to use, right? So um, this is not ideal. And what we need to remember is that this isn't forever. This is just a very temporary solution for um, a global pandemic that is happening right now. And we are just trying to make do with what we have. This will not in any way, shape or form replace in-person playing. Um, but we want to make sure that teachers are still able to teach music during this time and that we're not hung up on the lack of playing. Um, of course, it's a period of mourning for all of us. Like this is near and dear to our hearts. We didn't choose to become music educators to teach music digitally online. Um, but if that is the reality we're faced with in September, I think we need to embrace having the technology, being able to meet with our students and being able to teach music in some way. Maybe it's just theory, maybe it's just history lessons, maybe it's just little activities that we can do to keep them engaged, but learning rhythms and, and all of that good stuff, right? So um, I feel all of you, I, I, I am mourning as well. I miss my classes today. I said goodbye to my very last um, class of the year. Um, but just remember that this isn't, this is not forever. This is just very temporary. And if it is virtual, we want to make do and we want to make sure that we are still teaching kids because there's still a curriculum to teach. Um, the NAFME document actually had a little segment on virtual ensembles, which I know I've seen a lot of awesome video clips of teachers putting this together. If you've never done one, they're a lot of work. It's a lot of video editing, it's a lot of sound editing, it's a lot of time uh, sewing all those individual clips together. There, I think there is value in that, but I also agree with what Nafmi has said on their document, which is that um, focusing solely on this type of content as an instructional goal is not educationally beneficial, right? So as much as we want to have students do things, we need to be cautious of having them just do work, make work assignments, right? They have to have value, they need to be tied to the curriculum, and they need to be well thought out. Our second scenario is in-person instruction. So this might mean large ensembles as normal or as close to normal. So um, we know that there will be space requirements that will change. We will most likely see some social distancing happening. Um, sharing of instruments I know is a big concern right now. Um, from most documents that I have read, it's people have suggested not sharing instruments. Um, that would be the best. If you do have to share instruments, they say leave it for a period of time or plan for that so that you are able to sanitize those instruments. It does take a while. In terms of cleaning instruments, I think it's really important for us to understand the difference between sanitization and cleaning. Sanitization is when you're at the hospital and everything's totally airtight, sanitized and clean. But as soon as you open something up, it is no longer sanitized, right? So there is no possible way that we're able to sanitize instruments in our classrooms. The correct term we want to use is cleaning, right? And it's a deep clean. Um, in terms of virus life, I've read anywhere from a few days to two weeks. To ensure that we're not transmitting or passing on viruses, we need to make sure we give those instruments the proper amount of rest time before student use. That's the only way we can prevent virus spreading at this point in time. In terms of cleaning and regular maintenance, that would be enough to just, you know, in maybe pre-COVID times, but we just have to be very cautious of the difference between sanitization, cleaning, and disinfecting. Um, I know we've also seen a lot of those jokes with those choir, um, like the new band uniform where you have those like hoopy tents and you're in the plastic. Um, I laugh at that, but I'm also a little concerned that that might be what we are facing. Um, we want to start thinking about, and this is just 
pre, pro, proactive thinking. This is not to say that this is going to happen, but you want to start thinking about how you're going to manage, um, you know, spacing instruments. Are we using bell covers? Are students going to be using gloves? Will they be required to use masks? All of that. Um, whether students are going to be carrying instruments is another issue. So will you be storing them in your classroom? Will you have space for them? How are you sanitizing in between each class coming in? Are you going to have a floor plan of students coming in and one-way traffic? Those are all really big questions to kind of start thinking about and considering as we move forwards. Now, if you are in a school where your division has already gone ahead and canceled music um, or playing um, instrumental music, you can still do a lot of music, just not playing. So things like music history, composition and arranging, theory. Um, we can also really look at our Div 1, 2 and 3 teachers where they're doing boom whackers, ukulele, ear training, um, and even specific units of study, protest music, diversity in music, historical instruments. There is a lot out there that we are still able to do. And so once again, just remembering that we're still teaching the curriculum and there's still a lot in the curriculum we can teach without having to actually play our instruments. Um, if you are meeting as a large ensemble with reduced numbers, right now the big thing is chamber music. Um, there is an awesome initiative. It's the um, collective, ooh, what is it called again? The Creative Repertoire Initiative on um, Facebook. I know Frank to Kelly and a lot of other big name composers are a part of that right now. Um, and they're reworking some existing pieces into flex, like a true flex band arrangement where you're able to play any sort of instrument and make it work. Um, of course, there's also the flex band arrangements in the small ensemble groups. Um, and there are also a lot of quartet, trio, and um, quintet books out there right now as well. So that would be the recommendation for um, small group, smaller group ensemble. If you're doing a blended classroom, um, you can think about flip classroom, right? Where you are recording some of your instructions to one group of students who may be watching it from home and working physically with another group and then swapping them. Um, but this of course is all dependent on administration and their scheduling. So, um, once again, have those conversations with your administrators. You really want to make sure that they know what you need for your program to be successful. Um, I know a lot of people are panicked about their numbers, and I think it's important to know that we're all kind of in the same boat. And not only are we in the same boat with other music teachers, but we're in the same boat with other options as well. If we're thinking CTF, foods and fashions, all of those option teachers, right? Um, Everyone is worried about a dip in numbers and ultimately we will recover from this. It's, it's kind of a momentary blip, um, but I, it's hard to stress about something that you can't change, right? Um, it is unfortunate that a lot of our numbers will be decreasing in the next year and possibly further on, um, but ultimately, it is what it is, right? We work with the kids that we do have and we try our best and we try to move forward. So the last scenario is um, the blended scenario, which I touched on briefly. Um, and what you wanna do is you wanna try to create a seamless um, online instruction to physical interaction. So you wanna try to make sure that the kids are still getting as much as they can out of both the online as well as the in-person. There isn't a whole lot out there right now in terms of blended scenarios because this ultimately is an administration schedule-based decision. Um, in terms of general thoughts I have on this, repertoire, you wanna to try to pick things that are perhaps um, public domain this year because that way all of your students have access to it. It'd be easy to grab, it'd be easy to share. Um, I know a lot of publishers are also um, changing their rules right now for COVID-19, so it'd be important to check with the publisher. Um, if you are enrolled with Smart Music, it might be worthwhile picking a lot of music off of Smart Music because students would have access to that entire catalog. Um, and you might wanna do recordings that where kids can play along, right? The best case scenario is that all students have an instrument at home, 
if you are able to send instruments home with kids, that would be the best. But if that's not possible, um, there are always ways to keep up different parts of their, their instruction, like the rhythmic portion, their oral skills, all of that stuff, which is still important. It will still make them good musicians. In terms of assessment, we want to make sure assessments are clear and they have well-defined goals. I think this is a great opportunity for us to really think about feedback and how important feedback is. Um, we are able to do so much more with feedback online right now. I find it's like if you're using Flipgrid, you can record your feedback right to that student and be specific about that. I think that's one of the best things, at least for me, out of all of this was that I found I a lot of time to sit with each individual student's videos, their recordings, and give them valuable feedback. You also want to make sure that because if we are online, you're assessing or you're assigning short um, projects, not something that they're going to be sitting there doing for hours and hours at a time because that is frustrating, right? For both you who will have to market and for the student at home. So make learning manageable. If you're thinking about recruitment, um, do some videos. You can use, I know there are a lot of videos out there. The Marine Band has a lot of videos. I know a lot of you as educators I've seen floating around on Facebook, a lot of um, recruitment videos, but ultimately the kids will respond best to a familiar face. So if you are able to spend some time, do a few videos, it gets kids pretty excited to see you. Um, the ideas of only starting basic instruments have been out there. Um, if you're doing online evaluations, you can think about doing pitch matching, singing, rhythm clapback, buzzing, all of that stuff. Um, you can also do virtual class visits. Maybe you want to invite another music teacher from your division into your classroom and have them guest teach a class or guest speak about something that is really a passion of theirs. Um, you can also, I've heard a lot about these music um, kits that you can take home for kids to try out the different head joints and uh, the mouthpieces. If you have access to a 3D printer, you can absolutely 3D print mouthpieces. So Thingiverse is the site that I used to use. Um, and I know there's some really awesome like Bop 7C mouthpiece printouts on there that you're able to use. In terms of finances, and this is always the tough one because um, we, we don't have a whole lot of control over what our finances are. Our men tell us, this is what you're getting, this is what's coming out of it, and you nod and, and you, you try to make the best of the situation. So we're, a lot of the documents I've re uh, read have recommended that the schools should be providing personal protective equipment. So that includes sanitizers that are safe for the instruments, as well as any equipment that you might need to be safe in your classroom, like gloves, if you're working with slides and valves and that kind of thing. Um, music budget should go towards paying for music, maybe software, recording software, um, other digital materials that might be appropriate for what you are doing in this upcoming year. Uh, you may want to consider redirecting resources to commission or create pieces. If you go in together with a few people and have a consortium, it definitely makes it a little more affordable. Um, Additional purchases of rental of instrument and equipment might be necessary this year. So another conversation that you'd want to have with your administrators sooner rather than later. In terms of general hygiene, there are a lot of really great cleaning guides out there right now. NAFME has a really um, thorough document on their website. Um, hand washing, of course, is the big one, right? So we want to make sure kids are hand washing on their way in and on their way out. No loose equipment or papers within cases. Um, yeah. In terms of timetabling, definitely try to talk to your administrators. This is all stuff that I'm sure a lot of you have, are aware of and have read in many different places. Um, and in the most general, we want to make sure we're thinking about community and relationships, right? Um, as music teachers, we're used to having a lot of our kids in our classrooms before class in the middle of the day during lunch hour and after school, right? Um, those kids who love being there, they might need us more than ever right now. So it's just the quick sending them an email. Hey, how are you guys doing today? Um, still thinking about you guys and what, you know, band class was and can't wait to make music with you soon. We want to make sure we focus on social emotional learning. There's a really great website um, for this and I will um, share a folder with you guys. Um, lots of great resources and I think a lot of divisions are going this way especially after 
COVID-19. Um, and in terms of concerts, it might be a while until we have a, a real live concert again. And I am sad about that, and I'm sure a lot of you are too. Um, you can consider live streaming your concerts if we are able to play and meet in person. Um, if we're doing social distancing, it might, uh, I know a lot of divisions have already said no to field trips. So can we bring commissions in and working with our kids virtually? And at the end of this, we just want to remember that we're changing the how, right? How we teach music and not the what. The what stays the same. We are music teachers, we're teaching music, we're teaching the curriculum. There's so much of the curriculum that we can teach without having to play. So ultimately, um, I know nothing here is new information for a lot of you. I know a lot of you have been diligent in reading and attending webinars and conferences and sessions, but um, we just thought we would offer a few ideas um, through this presentation and to touch base because ultimately we Alberta is a big province and it's nice to kind of see the people that we're working with across the, our province. Um, anything to add Sarah and Peter? We're just uh, watching the chat and uh, so thank you for all of that and I know that you've got lots of the links on here and we can uh, bring those links or offer those links later as well. So lots of great ideas about what to do. It seems like most of the issues um, which we agree with are around advocacy and what are we doing with AHS and all that kind of stuff. So I don't know, Kim, have you been kind of grouping them? I've kind of been doing the same. Do you, have, do you want to go and then I can piggyback on you? Sorry, yes, I'm typing out um, things as we're talking here too. Um, or I can, yeah, whatever. Yeah, so why don't you go ahead, Sarah, and then I can piggyback on uh, anything that I can sort of help with as we're going through all these questions and trying to group here together. <laughs> okay, great. Okay, so I think one of the issues that's coming out, and this is why I think there's so many people here, is that we're all wondering what's the cons who is talking to AHS what is there a bigger group rather than just the band or just Academy or just this or just that um and yeah how do how are we doing that so I know Nathan had a session last night which was which was very timely and this uh is a good kind of piggyback on that that we do want to do that we do want to have all of us uh, maybe I'm speaking for more groups than just what I belong to but I know that there that we do want to have several groups coming forward to create a statement that can go to AHS and be uh, the voice for, for us all. Uh, but I know, Kim, you've had more to do. You've said that you have been in contact with them. So maybe you can share what you've talked to them about. Sure. So I've talked to the same people at AHS that Choir Alberta has spoken with. Um, and when I was in touch with them, um, they said that they were going to be releasing guidelines for wind instruments for band and choir um, in, within a week and a half. And then the guidelines that we all received from Alberta Health Services came out that a week and a half later. So, and then they asked me to put together a list of questions and things like that that might come up from our membership. Um, and then I will forward those questions on to um, our contact at Alberta Health Services and BizConnect folks that are dealing with all of that information that's coming in. And they're getting inundated with tons of questions as well. So we have the, the, same, the same contact with, um, with folks that Choir Alberta has. Um, the thing to remember is that we are all waiting with bated breath on, the, on that study from Colorado that'll be done in July sometime. Um, and we're waiting to, so that we actually have something to take forward and say, look, there's now definitive proof um, of, as to what is happening when people are playing instruments. And so that gives us a little bit more power rather than saying, that gives us more to, to work with when we do approach Alberta Health Services. And who knows how, what they're going to say, and, but it gives us more of a leg to stand on when we actually do have information from that study to present to them. Um, and maybe it wouldn't be a bad idea if Nathan just took a minute just to kind of update us on Cadme. Would that be okay? Yeah. Uh, Nathan, I, I only have one screen at a time. I'm assuming you're still here. I am, yes. Sorry, hi. 
Great. Um, yeah, I I know we had a a wonderful conversation with uh, many of you actually uh, last night, and um, I think that in a sense of having a statement as a unified front, it doesn't matter whether it's ABA or Coral Alberta, AFA, Cadme, whatever, but that we're all saying the same thing. That it's very similar to the, what the NAFME, um, you know, um, send out is there that, and we could use a lot of that material, I think. But um, I think to have that sense of a unified front, that um, rule number one, we're offering music education, period. And it doesn't matter um, where we're at, wh at what level, K through 12 or whatever. And that um, we know how to do that and deliver something of value, whether we're in front of students or some combination of blended learning or fully online. And um, that I think that's that's key. So I don't know if that kind of sums up a little bit. But uh, yeah, also, thanks. So the plan is to kind of come up with a statement and then somehow get it could be band organize like band parent organizations or community bands or community choirs that everybody kind of can come together uh, under this one banner and just say we're about music education whether we can blow air through instruments or not give us a place to be and do our thing um, at this point. Um, and maybe just further to that, I'm seeing that uh, a, a statement will only have a, a, with parent backing, of course, so uh, having statements, having that um, voice from the stakeholders of being parents and students, and youth, and, and community groups too. Um, absolutely, that 100%. And I think that also should all inform that statement to some degree, right? Um, that everybody can be behind it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so that's that's one kind of group I think is all about who's making the statement to AHS. Do they get what we're doing? Do they get we're different than singing? Do they they get how important we are? How do we get their attention? Who's talking to them? Um, so I think that's one group. And then the other one is, I think, is our rural friends and how we can support them um, as a group together. Uh, whether it's resources or ideas or just connecting like this. Maybe we do this once a month where we can just come together and, and talk. Um, but I think I saw that kind of going through the stream too about um, helping our friends all over the province. Kim, do you have thoughts about that or have you seen that come up? Um, but yeah, the question was asked about supporting rural programs and, and what's going to happen to rural programs. Um, we don't have an answer for you we, for that yet. Um, we, I've put it on the list of things that we can look for answers for, but we don't have an answer for you. Um, I do also think that it's important, you are all music educators that are affiliated with the ATA. The ATA is far stronger than Choir Alberta or ABA or CADME or any of those organizations combined. Um, and so it would be really fantastic for you to talk to your union reps as well to find out what your access points can be. Not just, um, what your access points can be to help advocate for your positions and what you do. Um, that's a really powerful inroad that you have that we don't have. Um, and that would be a good thing for you all to use as well. And maybe Kim uh, Hastings, uh, you created two letters which are great, just a place to start. Do you want to just jump on and, and talk about those? Uh, yes, um, I think, well, I think we're dead if we don't get our kids playing again, but um, I, um, we just created some letters um, signed by a concerned music parent and then one for a band director, although I'm sure you're all doing your own advocating, and then su supplied the addresses to encourage parents to have as loud a voice as all of our sports people out there and just send uh, letters, individual email letters to um, the uh, education minister, to Kenny and to their local MLA representative. Because my idea is just that the more letters we get saying that their kids, that it's what's important to them is music and that they want their kids playing again, will actually maybe make some of those people um, sit up and take notice and perhaps you know, with a message from ABA about how we can maybe, you know, be adaptable and have our kids playing again will help us get back out on the other side. So the letter I think is a good idea, but you can, you can change it however you want. I just think we need to get individuals communicating with the government. So that's our idea. 
Thanks, Kim. And is there a way that you can link that in the chat here? Those letters? I think someone already did. I think the Peter guy already clicked on way up at the top there has already shared it. Okay, great. And uh, if that didn't work, I can, I am, I'm not, I'm not very techy. Let's just why I need my kids back in class. So and we so. can definitely share that to the website as well. That's great. I just wanted to it's jump in page. on the, um, on the cohorting thing, because I know that that's been a, a big issue with junior highs uh, in Edmonton Public especially, and I've had uh, several conversations with my principal already about how he has to keep in mind that we can still find ways to make this work, even if we're cohorting. Because I, I know a lot of the junior high principals are like, how do we possibly do options? Because options split the kids in all different directions and we're trying to keep them there. So I saw earlier in the chat, Misha had been advocating for, you know, take a take your options and make those your cohorts. Um, and And then that would potentially solve that problem. The other thing is, you know, maybe we don't get to see our kids as often, but, you know, I made it clear to my principal, if I, you know, if it's a matter of me having band or not having band, um, I will find a way to make it work. I will take every kid in that cohort, grade seven, eight, and nine together, who's, who wants band, and we will figure out how to do music together. And the older kids can mentor the younger kids. We can do things without instruments until it's possible to do them with. But, you know, have those conversations with your principal that, yes, you are adaptable, you are flexible, and just because they don't see a way out doesn't mean that we can't creatively come up with something, even if it's not the optimum. Um, you know, we're not seeing them three times a week or whatever we normally would have. At least we're getting them. We're not losing our programs because I agree there's lots in the chat here. Once they start to chip away these programs, it's going to be really hard to fight for them to get back. Can I add something? Um, somebody posted in the chat that you were hoping for a, a combine a shared um, resource place, and that is actually being developed. I wrote it in the chat, but um, it was shared actually to the Creative Repertoire Initiative and was kind of uh, eyeballed by composer Alex Shapiro. And so I think that they're trying to collaborate to make it an even bigger uh, Google Drive. So this should be a really good resource when it's developed. Uh, there's a meeting happening tomorrow, I'm pretty sure. Um, so I'll, as soon as I hear anything or know anything, I'll make sure that it gets to the ABA to be posted. But the idea is that everybody can put their ideas into the Google Drive that everybody can see and we can share those ideas. So I know that's been going on in, in Zoom sessions and all the rest, but this way it'll be in front of everybody and you can kind of take from each other's resources. I think it's an awesome idea. That's great. Yeah, and that, if you haven't been on the ADA website, there's a start at, at some links and documents there too. So go on there. Um, and also speaking of the resources, um, so the Music Conference Alberta is going on. Like we will proceed this year with all the choir Alberta and the rest. And then we're going to do it, spread it out from like October all the way to April. It's like a monthly thing. So they will be like updated every month. Like, like when we move past the time, like let's say September, you know that you need that thing, send us a proposal, then hopefully we can schedule it in. So rather than just a, a weekend thing during October, we're going to spread out the music conference this year from October to April, a weekend thing. Yeah. Um, I noticed that comment here from Kim Friesen Weens. I don't, I don't think I know you, but I'm so glad you're here. Um, do you have any thoughts from the ATA Fine Arts Council and how we can uh, work together? Hi. Uh, <laughs> I wasn't expecting to speak. Sorry. Um, I was no, listening. So hi. Um, I think really we're just all playing catch up we're we're just all in that place and and i've been collecting documents and working at that and sharing that with um everyone at the eta um and and that's sort of where we're at at this point and i think the big thing is what i've been saying to um my ata art fine arts council is that we can't just wait, that we have to have things in place and we have to be working on that. And, and so that that's, I'm just in the process of collecting and trying to listen and hear and get that information. That's what I'm, I'm sorry, 
it sounds pretty pathetic at this point, but that's where we're at. Oh, yeah. we're all in the same boat. Thanks. Yeah, yeah, let's work together. Thank you. So we have 10 minutes left. Are there any other, anybody else out there in the world of Zoom land that uh, have any thoughts or would like to contribute before um, we? Yes, if I could. Sure. Um, I'm Dennis, long since retired, but very active um, in the schools and um, I work as a volunteer and I'm in Metaspin, which is a small community. I also share space with Camrose, which is another small community. Last Saturday, uh, we made a saxophone quartet and with the help of the local health officer who helped us make a situation for a program, we played at a senior's home. And it worked uh, for a couple of reasons. Number one, the particular home we played at had a great deal of, gr of uh, green space outside. So our uh, quartet, which had to be uh, a quartet times um, uh, times four, really, uh, we played in a big circle. The, uh, the uh, nursing home people brought some people outside but made sure they were always far enough away from us, left some inside in the building, and for half an hour we played some great tunes and we entertained everybody. They loved it. It was interesting moving to Wetaskiwin and trying it here. The nursing homes here are considerably newer and there's very little green space. So there was really no place for us to play. We couldn't play in the buildings uh, and uh, for a number of reasons. Number one, there wasn't room for us and there certainly wasn't room for the patients or the clients. But I strongly suggest if any of you have little ensembles, you might go shopping in the neighborhood of the uh, uh, nursing homes and see if there's a way you can play. And if you have a, a good feeling with your local health officer, uh, both of ours in Wetaskiwin and Camrose where they bent over backwards to help us out. In other words, they seemed to understand how music functioned, and here's a good way for you to set up. Uh, one more thing, a little on the darker side, I have a real good friend who's busy teaching. He got in great big cockadoodoo because he sent letters out to the parents without telling the principal and vice principal he was going to do it. So I suggest anybody who's going to rely on communication between parents, uh, guardians, or whatever, that you keep your principal and your vice principal apprised of what you're doing. Um, otherwise, uh, it could be uh, somewhat embarrassing. But again, if I could just stick this in, try nursing homes. We're all gonna end up in them at some point, some of us a little sooner than others. Um, but I strongly suggest that uh, if the weather's nice and the situation is nice, uh, you'll be much appreciated. There's my 25 cents worth. Thanks, Dennis. That's awesome. Yeah, play however you can, wherever you can. So I see a few comments about beginning band and starting them. Um, this is a hard question uh, because no one knows what's going to happen. Um, and I've been thinking about it a lot. And the best thing I've come up with is maybe doing scheduled like 15 minutes on Zoom or whatever um, platform that your school board is letting you use and just having all the clarinets show up or all the trumpets show up and going through it really slowly. I mean, it's definitely not ideal, but I think we, if we're able to try, if kids are able to have instruments, we, we should try because if we don't, then we have that giant gap that year where there's no instruments and no kids playing. So that's just my thoughts on that. Kim, is there anything we've missed in the chat? Well, I'm sure there's lots we've missed in the chat, but uh, anything we can talk, we have five minutes. Um. I, I think the um, there are some requests for doing for having more of this kind of thing uh, later on happen, uh, and we do have another another one of these discussions planned for the end of August, um, especially once we have that 
once the preliminary results of the study are in in July, and then we have the recommendations on August 1st for what's happening with schools and so on and so forth from the government, um, we, we can have another one of these gatherings to talk about how, uh, putting plans and such in place. Um, that was request and that's on our radar for something that's going to happen in the future. Um, ben has his hand up. Indeed he does. Oh man, I feel like I'm back in, uh, back in grade school. Um, <laughs> So just on the topic of, uh, of beginner band, um, I had already been thinking about ways to engage beginner band kids when we were doing this, this online learning thing. And um, I started putting together a, a little project and um, myself and uh, Kelly Sporing and uh, a bunch of other people that I, that I know over my career, we've started talking about the idea of putting together a a YouTube playlist of like sample demonstrations of the instruments, not just introduce the instruments, but maybe even stuff like I'm going to play number 26 out of the sound innovations book. Um, and the idea would be that if we do have to go to some kind of blended digital model um, that we have a resource to give and a resource that, that is being done, not necessarily by, you know, the other grade 12 students school, but by, those of us who are who are actually professionals on on the instruments, um, if anyone's interested, I'm still trying to uh, to work around how to get this. Um, I'll put my um, email into the chat, um, and if you're interested in participating or contributing something, you can uh, email me at that uh, and get involved and we'll see what comes of it if if god forbid we actually have to go to a, a digital platform for this thank you another suggestion along those lines is you know we all likely spend money at the beginning of the year i know every year i take my kids to the jumpstart program it's done by McCune university and we spend 35 40 dollars a kid busing them there and paying for the program and um I'm not sure exactly what they're doing next year, if they're looking at doing online versions, but I know that that could be a way we could do it. We can still have the kids take, um, they can take some kind of group online lesson from professionals and there's a lot of musicians, great local musicians who are really needing work too, right? So we could, we could engage those professionals to, to teach a group of beginner instrument players I, I agree, digital is certainly not optimum, but they can still hear each kid play one at a time and make some comments and give them suggestions and that. So that could be something, a way to get those beginners going. Yeah, um, like the University Leverage been doing all this head start for a long time. Um, we also have our own second, third and fourth year students looking to like help if any Greek six band or any beginner band that would love to have a guidance, I'm sure U of A, U of C, we all could chime in and get our music student to help in any, any way for that too. Yeah, like at least right here, I'm trying to help with some of the Greek six band. But again, then we run into the issue whether they can sign the waiver form, which we all have to wait until August. So, for now, it's just a waiting game for, until that report to really come out. So where we go from here is, Kim, this is recorded and we're going to save the chat and the links. So how does it work from here? How do people get this stuff that we've been sharing? So I will, I've been frantically trying to take some minutes and notate questions and things as they've come along and then I will collate all of that and send it out to all the participants. Um, as well, I'll post what we, the information that's gleaned up on the ABA website so it can be shared far and wide. And I will also, there is the ABA Facebook group. Um, we've just started a Facebook page as well, so we're working on getting that more information. So that's the next sort of step based on this. Then the board of directors will want to meet and discuss next steps that the board would like to move forward with based on the outcomes of um, the conversation and, and requests for information that people have gleaned from the chat. 
is what I would maybe suggest needs to happen next, and then the board can make a plan moving forward. And to stay connected with people, we'll do another one of these. Another one of these will happen at the end of August, and uh, we just kind of will move forward from there. As we get more information and we find out more, we find out more information and the, uh, the board I'm sure will be really active in this over the summer and participating and trying to come up with ways that you know we can we can be a, be of use to the membership um, that will that will materialize as we go so again it, it would be a we're at that point where <laughs> now we have information we kind of have ideas and um, it's almost it's a great brainstorming session to bring everybody together this way and and read through all the chat and see what everything's going and so now we just need to meet and discuss and put together a plan. Okay, sorry Kim, I'm just seeing a couple uh, uh, questions here about uh, so Jen, are you saying we should meet before the August 1st report? Yeah, so that's what I'm seeing some nods. Like we don't, yes, meet before August 1st as ABA like this again on Zoom? Well, I, I guess my question is, is it necessary for us to meet or does, is it possible for the ABA on our behalf to, I don't know, come up with an action plan prior to that decision being made on August 1st? Um, I think these gatherings are really important and it's great for us to connect. Um, but, and we're all doing our own individual parts, but I think if our provincial organization waits until after that decision has been made by the government, then we really haven't done what we could have, I guess. That's no, and I agree. I think I, we were talking about two different things. One is get the statement, get the information to the government before August 1st, for sure. I think that's the deadline we have to work with in terms of gathering as a group of uh, like-hearted music educators. Um, do we want to wait for that till after that date in terms of, okay, so now this is what's come down. What do we do next? Okay. So, yeah, I think we do need to, to be uh, busy before that comes down. I see a hand up from Joel. Oh, okay, good. I couldn't find the hand button on my computer, so <laughs> I was hoping that you guys could see me. Um, you got 91 people online here who are obviously very interested in this, and our ABA board is fantastic, and I'm sure they're very busy doing things right now. Um, uh, if you have a need, and I know that you guys do send out these que these statements and newsletters and such, but um, uh, there's some fairly specific tasks that might need to become up here and might, might need to come up here and might need some extra hands. And I'm pretty certain you got a bunch here that are willing to help out with it, even uh, contacting people, uh, helping draft letters, things like that. Just uh, draft public statements that can be done as uh, public letters to the uh, to the premier or something to that effect. We we you got a bunch of hands here, so please feel free and thank you for doing this. Thanks, Joel. All right, uh, Peter, you've been kind of quiet. Is there anything you need to say at this point? I was just, you know, kind of watching the chat and, and looking forward. There's a few suggestions about, you know, maybe continuing this as a semi-regular type of meeting now that we've all gotten used to being on Zoom and Google Meets and stuff. And it, it really is a powerful, a uh, way to connect us all that we've maybe been missing. And, and this is, could, could be one good thing that comes out of this is that we are able to connect more directly as membership more often. And that might be a way we can help support some of the, the smaller programs and the rural programs is with ideas and support and that. So that might be something that we can take away um, as a board and, and look at, maybe this is something that just continues on and we, we have Zoom meets every month or every six weeks or what, whatever we think will work to connect people and ideas. Yeah, sounds good. Uh, Jolene, Kim, any final thoughts? None for me. <laughs> uh, I think, I guess my only final thought is just to say thanks everyone for being here and uh, for being present and we are, I will make sure that this all gets collated and sent to the board so that they can also hear and see everything that you're concerned about and thinking about and we'll 
we'll just we'll, we'll be in touch and we'll stay in touch. Always feel free to drop me an email and we can, um, and uh, I will make sure it gets into the right hands for who needs to address whatever concern or issue that you might be having as best as I can. <laughs> um, and I, I think we've heard loud and clear too that everyone really needs a unified voice and wants that from us. So we'll definitely take that as the board and do the best we can to send a message and everyone can take the, the letter templates and that and you can, you know, get your base going, get those sent out, get your strong band parents to advocate for your program with the letters while we work on kind of sending a unified voice from the organizations. Thank you. Well, thanks for everyone for coming tonight, spending an hour together. You are all amazing educators who are changing lives of children every day, but you deserve a break. Yay! So hopefully uh, you can put some of this aside and uh, get some good rest this summer and we'll uh, talk again soon. But we're all available. We uh, Maybe I will put my email here. Um, so feel free to email any of us, contact us through the ABA and uh, have a great rest, have a great summer. Thanks all. Thank you. Have a good night.